Welcome to this lecture where we'll discuss why we divide by n minus 1 instead of just n when we calculate the sample variance and the sample standard deviation. Note that one can show mathematically why we need to divide by n minus 1 so that the expected value of the sample variance is equal to the population variance. However, that requires tons of math. We'll therefore try to get an understanding based on some simple example data. Let's say that we have a variable that is normally distributed with a mean of 170 and a variance of 49. The variable in this case represents the body heights of people in a certain population. Since the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, the standard deviation of the body heights in this population is 7 cm. Let's say that we draw four random individuals from this population. For example, the first individual has a body height of 157 cm, whereas the second individual has a body height of 165 cm, and so forth. Since we know that the average body height in this population is 170 cm, we expect that these four individuals have an average body height of 170. However, due to chance, these four individuals happen to be relatively short. The mean height of these four individuals is 166 cm. We'll now calculate the variance of the body heights of these four individuals by using three different equations. The first equation is the standard equation that we use to calculate the sample variance when we divide by n minus 1. The second equation is essentially the same equation as the first one, but where we divide by only n instead of n minus 1. We will later see why this equation is not appropriate. In the third equation, we calculate the sample variance by using the population mean instead of the sample mean. When we use the population mean, we should divide by just n. In this equation, we will therefore use the mean that is estimated based on our sample of four individuals. In the second equation, we also use the sample mean. Whereas in the third equation, we instead use the true population mean value. Next, we calculate the sample variance by using the first equation. We plug in the sample mean and the body heights of the four individuals. Remember that when we calculate the sample variance based on the sample mean, we divide by n minus 1. We see that our estimated variance is pretty close to the true population variance. In contrast, if we divide by just n instead of n minus 1, the estimated variance is much lower than the true population variance. However, when we subtract by the population mean instead of the sample mean, it seems okay to divide by n, because the estimated variance is very close to the true population variance. Let's say that we draw four new random individuals from the population. These four individuals happen to be relatively tall. The mean height of these four individuals is 176 cm. If we now calculate the sample variance based on the sample mean, we see that the sample variance is much lower than the true population variance. The reason why the variance is so small is that we happen to randomly select four individuals that had quite similar body heights. If we divide by just n instead of n minus 1, we see that this estimate is even further away from the true population variance. The second equation will always result in a smaller variance than the first equation, because we divide by 4 instead of 3. It seems like if we do not divide by n-1, we'll underestimate the true population variance. In contrast, Using the third equation, where we use the population mean instead of the sample mean, the estimated variance is much closer to the true population variance. This is because the data points are relatively far away from the population mean, compared to the distance to the sample mean. If you now repeat this process 10,000 times, then we'll have 10,000 estimates of the variance from each equation. For example, these values correspond to our estimated variances for the first random dataset, whereas these values are our estimated variances for the second random dataset, and so forth. 
When we calculate the mean of these 10,000 estimated variances, we see that the first equation, where we divide by n minus 1, is definitely an appropriate estimate of the population variance, since the mean of the 10,000 values is approximately equal to the true population variance. However, when we divide by n instead of n minus 1, the mean of the estimated variances is much lower compared to the true population variance. This simulation study therefore shows that dividing by n minus 1 gives a much better estimate of the true population variance compared to if we divide by only n. In comparison, if we use the population mean instead of the sample mean, then we also get a good estimate of the population variance, even though we divide by just n. In conclusion, the reason why we divide by n minus 1 is because we first need to estimate one parameter, the mean, to estimate the variance. When we use the population mean, then we do not need to first estimate the mean. To understand why we need to correct by subtracting 1 from the sample size, let's consider the following two random data points. Note that they are located quite far away from the true population mean. However, they are relatively close to the sample mean. Since we only have two data points, the sample mean is a value between these two points. If the mean of the two data points is equal to the population mean, then their distance to the population mean and the sample mean will be identical. When we draw two random individuals, the sample mean is unlikely to correspond to the population mean, especially for small samples. This means that the distance of the data points to the sample mean will always be shorter compared to the distance to the population mean. When we estimate the variance based on the estimated mean, we will therefore underestimate the population variance because the data points will always be closer to the sample mean compared to the population mean. The only case when the data points have the exact same distance to the sample mean as they have to the population mean is if the sample mean happens to be identical to the population mean. So, the reason why we divide by n minus 1 is because the data points are almost always closer to the sample mean compared to the population mean. By subtracting 1 from the sample size, we adjust the sample variance so that we do not underestimate the true population variance. When we estimate the population mean, we lose 1 degrees of freedom. Which is the reason why you subtract 1 from the sample size. The denominator is therefore our degrees of freedom. However, minus 1 will have a tiny effect when we estimate the sample variance based on a large sample. For example, subtracting 1 from 1000 does not make a big effect on the denominator. Therefore, for very large sample sizes, the equation is approximately equal to this one where we have ignored minus 1 in the denominator. So, is the standard deviation also an unbiased estimate if we divide by n minus 1? Remember that the sample standard deviation is the square root of the sample variance. The only difference from the equation for the variance is that we take the square root of the expression. To test if the sample standard deviation is an unbiased estimate of the population standard deviation, we again take a random sample of four individuals. We use the same equation as before, but we will here take the square root of the sample variance in order to calculate the sample standard deviation. If we now repeat this process 10,000 times, then we will have 10,000 estimates of the sample standard deviation. What is surprising is that although the variance is an unbiased estimate, the standard deviation is not. We see that the mean of the 10,000 standard deviations is about 8% lower than the true population standard deviation. Note that the difference becomes smaller and smaller when we increase the sample size. For example, if we use the sample size of 20 individuals instead of 4, then we only underestimate the true standard deviation by approximately 1% if we sample from a normal distribution. The reason why the standard deviation is not an unbiased estimate, like the variance, is due to that the square root is a nonlinear transformation. Although the standard deviation is a biased estimate, 
especially for small samples. The statistical tests that we'll use later in this course can adjust for this bias. This was the end of this lecture. I hope that you now have a better understanding of why we divide by n minus 1. Thanks for watching.